Hello everybody, hope you're doing marvellously well. In this video, we're going to talk about five tips to get you creating music. So welcome back to Produce Like a Pro. Please hit that notifications bell down there, the subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed, and please hit that like button. It's all rather lovely when I get to see that you like the video. And of course, comments and questions below. I read them all, I try my darndest to answer every single one of them. I will have a laptop on me or a phone on me all day answering questions, trust me. I love doing it, I love hearing from you, and I love our community. Okay, so what is my first tip? So what's the best way to get started making music? Well, number one is just get started. Now, I know that sounds silly. I used to wait until I was inspired. And when I waited until I was inspired, I would probably make music once every several months. Now that I have a really, really busy life, I just set aside time to make music. And the great thing is, well, I'm not just talking about like working with an artist, playing guitar, playing bass, doing overdubs, mixing, whatever. I'm talking about music. I like to make music. I got into this to play guitars. I wanted to be Brian May. It's pretty freaking obvious. You know, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be in a band and make music. So when I want to write a song, I have to allot some time. Sometimes I don't have the faintest idea what I'm going to write, but I just open up a session and start making music. I honestly believe that waiting for inspiration to hit will stop me from ever making music because I allow that element of second guessing every idea I have. So maybe I've got a guitar part and I'm starting to write something and I'm like, hmm, is it good enough? I'm not sure, you know, or well maybe I'll come back to it tomorrow. It's just not the way to work. Just set aside time. So many of you may be at school and you've got long hours doing that and then you come back and you're doing homework and you've got limited amount of time to work on your music. Then other people are married with children, single parents with kids, or just somebody who has a ridiculous 15 hour day job. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. With that reality, just set aside some time you know you can do. I actually find the reality is, is that about 45 minutes of real music making happens with me. And then I need to move on to something else. If I've got an idea that I want to put down, or I want to think of an idea to put down, I'll mess around on guitar for five or 10 minutes, I'll come up with something kind of cool, and then I'll put a double to it, and then maybe I'll work on a harmony part, I'll put a bass line down, I'll strum some chords to it, and maybe go, -da 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 -da, you know, sing a vocal melody. That is usually about 45 minutes work, and I've got the basis of an idea down, which I can just put down to the next day, come back to the next day when I've got an hour to spare and listen to what I've done and work on it then. Maybe you start working on some lyrics. The point is, is like, it's about how much actual time, you know, together you put into it. If, if it ends up that you work on it 10 times for 45 minutes, that's a lot of time. So cut yourself a break, realize that some of the greatest songs were written in two minutes and some of the greatest songs were written in five hours and five years. And there is no rules. That is the point. There's no rules. So just set aside some time and write that idea. Get down there, get stuck into it, find some time in a busy day and just make music. Number two, this one's going to sound a little tiny, little bit contradictory to my first statement but these things can live in tandem. This is a reality, and the reason, you'll hear me say all the time, there are no rules. Let me just second that again. There are no rules. There are zero rules, no rules. When somebody's telling you how to do things or not to do something, these are just guidelines, and these are things that have worked for me. But number two, again, is be ready to record at any time. So, why am I saying that? Well, because in the last one I said that, you know, set aside time, don't, only record when you have inspiration. And then I said to you, inspiration maybe only comes to me like once a month where some amazing melody just flies through my head. Okay, what happens then? I reach for my phone and I go to the memo and I sing the idea in, or I play the guitar part into my... The point is, is like, be ready to record because inspiration is kind of weird. And you can wake up at four o'clock in the morning, humming a melody, pick up your cell phone and sing it in there. There's a really, really famous story that you may have heard a hundred times before, but Keith Richards supposedly wrote Satisfaction like this. I think he was playing a show 
After the show, he got wasted drunk, and he used to always tour with a little reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. And so Keith Richards had this reel-to-reel, -reel, and it, remember they used to have those mics with like the doing spongy things, for those of us older who remember our parents having these things. Anyway, the story goes is that he wakes up in a drunken stupor at like four o'clock in the morning, picks up his guitar and goes down, 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 and plays one of the most famous guitar riffs of all time. He wakes up, I don't know, 10 o'clock in the morning, let's just say. He wakes up and he looks over and his reel to reel is going like this to tape. And he doesn't remember waking up in the middle of the night. So he said he re put the, you know, re-spooled the tape and played it back. And it was basically this, you know. Down, 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 down. And the sound of him falling back to sleep. So my point is, is like, even Keith Richards could have lost that guitar part. We would not have had satisfaction. He had a reel to reel. We've got cell phones, we've got tablets, we've got laptops. The point is just be ready to record at any time. So now we can take that one stage further. That means like have your setup, your laptop, your, your, your whatever you use, your, um, you know, your computer, your tower, whatever it is, and just have your interface plugged in. Have it so that it's always ready to go. Interface is in there. Have a microphone just patched in. You know, we usually, that's there. We have a microphone sitting on a stand over there. And it's actually powered up, ready to go. It is a, L a Lewitt LCT 550, it's a condenser microphone. And I can pull that out at any time and just plonk it in the middle of a room or we can just press record on the channel it's coming into. Why do we have that? Well, because we're always writing songs in here. If you're a guitar player and you have an amp, have the amp mic'd up. Have your little USB MIDI controller always plugged into your interface, always ready to go. Just have like something really, really simple that you can always get started. So be ready to record. And quality does not matter, getting the idea down. If all you've got is a laptop, or you've got is a cell phone, or you've got whatever it is, just record it, get the idea down. And if you do have a studio set up ready to go, have it ready to go. Have it so you can get to it pretty darn quickly. Number three, listen to other genres outside of the genre you work in. This is really big because it's actually very, very obvious. If you think about all of the great music made in the 60s, or you know what, go back. Go back to like the f earliest forms of blues and jazz. Those were African Americans that were in the turn of the last century that were taking their African tribal music and taking it with European music using European instruments and creating something completely unique. The blues and jazz Frankly, mixing in with some, you know, classical and stuff is what inspires us to make music. Obviously, folk music, you know, is where country predominantly comes from. But when I think of like my upbringing and the bands that I loved when I was a kid, they were all English guys like me trying to sound like black blues guys. My point is, is like you always take from other great things. I mean, to me, if you don't know who Robert Johnson is, you shouldn't be doing music. I mean, Robert Johnson wrote a handful of songs which have been covered by every single amazing musician ever. Half of the Stones catalog so far feels like, you know, that, let alone Zeppelin and everything else. So all of these artists influence so much of the music that we do. You throw in Hendrix and some Miles Davis and all of the bebop and all, I mean, it's some of the greatest music. But rock and roll and country and everything is a blend of all of those things. I don't understand when anybody turns themselves off from anything. I don't care if it's EDM or hip hop and you do metal. They all make sense. They all make sense to me. Every genre makes sense. Gain perspective, listen to other genres, listen to other stuff. Don't, don't block yourself out. You can go back to the oldest of the old, you can get the newest of the new and everything in between, but always be looking for other things outside of your very narrow world that we all fall into, trust me. I fall into the same problems all of the time. Look outside of it for inspiration. Number four. Okay, this one's a little, uh, little contradictory to an earlier one. But again, like I said, these tips are all ways for us to get to make music. They don't have to run concurrently. They don't actually all have to work at the same time. But this one, number four, get outside of your comfort zone. What I mean here is like, if the only way you record ever is to flip open your laptop, 
plug in your USB keyboard, search for a loop, put the loop across, start going copy and paste, blah, blah. If that's what you do, great. Next time you pick up and start working on a song, don't do that. Do something different. Find a different source. The point is, is like break up the monotony of what you do. Get creative, think in a different way. If you're always starting with the drum loop and then building tracks on top of it, you know what? Start with a piano vocal. Start with an acoustic guitar vocal and work backwards. There's a million ways of doing it. If you have one way of working, try something different. And also gear. Gear is a big one. Do you always use this and go through that and use that mic and blah, blah, blah and do all this? I fall into that trap all the time. I have an amazing setup for guitars. I have an SM57 going into a BAE 312, going into a Spectrosonics compressor. I was doing guitars earlier today and we just tapped that compressor, Spectrosonics, ever so lightly. Barely had a light come on and it was fantastic with my Marshall. Best guitar sound we've had in months. You know I don't want to change it. But what's going to happen? I'm going to do the next five albums all with exactly the same guitar sound. It's just not the way to think. I should change up the guitar, the mic pre, the compression. The point is, is like, I need to get out of my comfort zone so I can create something that's really great. Repeating yourselves, repeating myself over and over again is not going to give me the greatness that we all are looking for. So whether it be gear, whether it be how you start recording and what your normal things that you do, change them up do something different. All right, last but no means least, and I think this sort of is, the spirit of this one is in every single one of the ones we've done. This is something that um, I think about because of something I read about Neil Young, and I'll talk about that in a second. And it is, number five, try writing on an instrument that isn't your first instrument. So for me, that's piano. I'm a, I'm a really good guitar player. I practice all day, I love playing guitar, that's it. However, you put me on a piano, I'm like, plinky plonky. But I write really good songs on the piano. A couple of my favorite songs I've written were written on the piano because I play very simple things and also I think differently. The reason why I brought up the Neil Young story is because one of my favorite albums, um, uh, an old, old album I discovered when I was a kid, is um, After the Gold Rush by Neil Young. And those of you who are fans of After the Gold Rush will probably know this story. But the story goes is he hired Nils Lofgren, who I think at the time was very young. Nils was probably only about 18 years old. And Nils is a phenomenal guitar player. Um, he was in the E Street Band for a while. He played with, he played with everybody. He plays in Crazy Horse, you know, with Neil Young. I mean, basically, he's just, and he's also an incredible singer. Neil Young hired him to play, you guessed it, piano. A really amazing musician, Nils Lofgren, a guitar player playing piano. And I think that that is kind of a great illustration about taking yourself, it goes back to the take yourself out of the comfort zone, but also more importantly, like how as a writer, limiting yourself can really create greatness. Tom Petty said it best when he said, if I had been a good guitar player, I would have been an awful songwriter. Create those things, create those things to push against. Find ways to, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be like you're a guitar player, you play piano, you're a piano player, you play guitar. Just try a different instrument, try a different approach, get creative. Creativity is all about being creative. So have fun with this. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell, go to producelikeapro.com, sign up for the email list. We have a brand new academy there, it's absolutely wonderful. Um, thank you everybody that's an academy member already. Please leave a bunch of comments and questions below. I love seeing them and I love answering them. Have a marvelous time recording and mixing.